How's it going guys? My name is Nick Novak. Welcome to the Hidden Spring Ranch YouTube channel. We're located in Kansas. Um, today is day 45 of 50. If you're new, welcome. We're doing a 50 day challenge. We're on day 45. Today is a big day. We're out here with these yearlings that we have out. They've been out for about 150 days. They're getting shipped tomorrow. So what the plan is, is we're going to get this fence, this hot wire taken down between them over here and the middle pasture. We're going to move them all the way up to the house, which is about a half mile away. I have some fence and stuff that needs to be um, fixed, repaired, and everything up there by the house. Because I've been doing a lot of um, redoing stuff up there. So what my plan is to do is I'm going to get this hot wire taken down. We'll cake those cows into this middle pasture, and we'll see if they can't work their way up there. Um, everything in the middle pasture, fence-wise, is good. And so by the time I get back up there to the house, these yearlings won't quite be behind me yet. At least they shouldn't be following me that fast because I'll be caking them just right here inside this fence. Um, we'll see if they can't work their way up there. Um, but I'll get that fence fixed and repaired before they get there. And we'll try to get them up there in that front pasture. Before I cake them, I'm gonna walk up here to their water tank and get it shut off. Maybe they'll get one quick last drink to where I don't have to drain it all. And uh, then we'll get on the road with them. Here girls, come on. You guys can see it doesn't take much to get them trained to cake. This is the second time I've done it. I'm gonna go back there and kind of just push up these stragglers, see if they'll come up and eat some so that they're not so that they're not scared to um, come up when I actually want to get them in the corral tomorrow. I'm not pushing them hard. I just kind of made a little bit of noise and they ran out. I want them all to get a little taste of that cake. And then when I come back with a little bit more cake, hopefully they'll follow me, ready to go. As a safety precaution though, I wasn't gonna shut this hot wire back up because I took the charger, but I might as well just put it up and kind of help prevent these cows from going back to where they were at to make it a little bit harder for me. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna put the hot wire up. You always get about 80% of them that are tame and then you get some that are a little crazy. So if you're new, these yearlings are actually spayed heifers. Um, we got them onto our ranch. They weighed 677 pounds. And so we took off their friends. I had 80 out here actually. We took them out at about 100 days. We got into a little bit of a drought and they were getting ahead of the grass. And so the 20 that I bought, so I own these 20. Um, I sent the 60 back to the feed yard owned that I was just custom grazing for them. Um, they, they ended up gaining 2.03 pounds a day for the first 100 days, which was phenomenal. I was really happy with that. Um, so I'm hoping these last 50 days, if they can gain like one, three, one, four, if it averaged out to be about 1.7 pounds a day, that would uh, make me very happy. So that's the plan, that's the goal, that's the hope. One. This right here is the first thing we need to get fixed is the wire is pretty bad here. Um, we're gonna try to get it stretched up and uh, tied onto this post right here. But looks like mom is walking a little bit. Okay, so I don't really have time to get it fixed perfectly because I don't want them yearlings running up here. So I have this old panel that I used as my gate. I'm just gonna tie these wires up to this first post and we'll put that panel right here for now. And then once we get these yearlings shipped tomorrow, we can work on that, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, because Saturday's when we're gonna work all those spring cows that we have. We'll get them worked, um, preg checked, and move them out to this 50 acre pasture. So I need to make sure that this pasture's in tip top shape, but I just don't want those yearlings running through that if they get past me. So.
Oops. He just needed to see you, Dad. Okay. It's not pretty, but it'll work. Next order of business, the wheel crow. What I'm gonna have to do is we're gonna lift it up, take the tires off, grab the skid steer, and we're gonna push it forward. It's hard to get this thing in place with my pickup because I have to use my pickup to back up to it. And the back has to be perfectly facing this direction so that I can get a semi in here because we're gonna have a semi come and get these 20. Um, he's actually going to Gorm to my uncle's place first to grab a few calves that he has left to go to the feed yard, then he'll throw mine on top of that. So technically I'm not, I don't have a full load, but we'll make a full load with two trips. Um, so let's get these tires off. We'll go get the Bobcat, get it pushed up. I need to go close that gate up there. And then that gate we just put in yesterday, we need to put up some panels over there. And then basically those yearlings are going to have all this dirt and all those weeds in this little three acre pasture that I called my bottle calf pasture. If you're new, they'll have all of that to uh, graze on today and then tomorrow morning. Um, but tonight, if I can catch them, if it works out, I'm going to try to catch them in this tonight because the truck's going to be here at 1030 and I work until 930. By the time I get home, I'm going to have 30 minutes. And if I do have any problems, it might be kind of a crap show trying to get them by myself. So the plan is if I can get them caught in the wheel corral, we'll feed them. We'll just throw a bale of hay in there for them, water them, and let them sit there overnight. So, but that won't happen until later this evening. Today is just going to be getting them into this front pasture. pushed up what I want to do now is get all my gates closed and fix that other panel that I was talking about so that I can get my Jeep out of here um, so that I can set that wheel corral up the way I want it and if those cows are still following me when I come up here I'm just gonna try to cake them in it see what happens okay guys we got that gate open we closed the one up at the top and all we gotta do is put these panels up real quick we should be good to go okay guys so as much as I don't want to and just kind of makeshift it. I might as well do it right since I'm right here. And I have some time because I, I ran over and checked. Those yearlings are still in that middle pasture. So I don't have to worry about them getting up here. Um, so what I'm going to do is take this these wires. We're actually going to connect them right there. Eventually we'll put a wood post um, right there. But I don't think we'll need one now. Um, just because I think I'll be able to get it strung tight enough. So I got the first one on. Let's go ahead and get these other four on. What I'm doing here is splicing my wires together because this post is a little bit longer than the old post so my wires don't reach the post. So once I get them spliced together here, we should have enough length to get around this post right here.
Okay, the wires are up. That is tight as I can get them. Let's go see where them yearlings are at. Okay, y'all, so I forgot. We, we need to get this set out. So I went ahead and got the whole wheel corral set up. I didn't show you guys because it's not very interesting. It's kind of boring. It's really pretty easy to by yourself. But anyways, she set up right. Let's go see if we can find some of them yearlings and see if we can't get them up here in this front pasture. One of the main reasons why I want to get them up in that front in this front pasture today is the weeds are getting kind of big. And they're all probably 900 pounds is kind of my guess. And uh, I'm hoping they eat some of these weeds down for me. But also, it'll be easier to catch them tomorrow. So, kind of a catch-22. Got two reasons why we're doing it this way. That's just what works best for me. So, let's get them. They're coming. I'm shaking the bag. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. There we go. All right, we got the first couple in here. There's a few stragglers. I'm gonna go with my um, shaker. See if we can't push them up to the right. Come on, girl. Let's go. Follow your friends. Hi, hi, hi. Got them in the 50 acre pasture here. We're gonna try to run them in. We'll see how it goes. Running them right here by the house. The gate is right there, ladies. Right there. You're looking. Get in there. Here we go. Walk in there. <whistles> All right, y'all, got to be a little patient here. It's so frustrating when they're standing right beside the opening and they won't go in. One of them will figure it out. Come on, girls. Get in there. There we go. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm gonna get a head count, make sure I got them all. There's nine walking through. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now that is what I'm talking about right there. A little patience. Just all you need is a little bit of patience. All right, now that we got them in, I want to drive back around there. Um, the tank that the bottle calves used is still in that pen. It's a smaller tank. Uh, I'll have to fill it probably twice today, which is fine. I'm not gonna go get their float because I'm gonna use that float on that tank for the spring cows when we bring them back on Saturday. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just fill it up all the way with a, with a hose. And uh, then tonight we'll fill it up again. So that worked really good, guys. Gotta love when cattle handling, soft cattle handling works. We got the hose started, we got water filling in there, and the yearlings are doing exactly what I wanted them to, eating the weeds. Now, before I go inside and eat lunch, it's like two o'clock right now. Let's go see if we have any new calves, see if we can't get something tagged real quick. Alright y'all, we're just pulling up here. Alright y'all, we're just pulling up here. I'm not seeing anything too out of the ordinary. 
if I'm being honest with you guys. I'm not seeing any off buddy off by themselves as of now anyways. So we'll just drive through here, check everybody, see if we can't find those five calves we have already, and uh, see what shakes. So just in the last couple days, there's probably eight or nine cows that are super bagged up and like I thought they would have gone by now and I have a feeling I don't know if it'll be today but it'll be one of these days and I think we'll have probably six or seven calves in one day that's my guess I'm pulling up here by the water tank I'm seeing our two big bull calves I see one little Charlet heifer as well and I think I see the other two calves as well so that's good I'm glad we got to see all five here's big bull big bull and that's a little heifer that was the newest one born would have been two days ago she's got a good mom pretty docile he'll be a stud yep here's the other two little calves the 88 and 98 I believe I don't want them to get up and run so the moms can't find them, but they're both not panting hard. Their ears are all propped up. Call that a win right there. I'm gonna drive through here, see if we see anybody else, but I think it's gonna be kind of a quiet day. That's what I think. Old 99, she's getting a little stringy. Stuff hanging out the back. She's bagging up pretty good. Another one that I think is going to go soon is 91. She's been bagged up for a while now. Look at her bag. She had a huge calf last year. She'll go soon. Some other numbers that I think is going to go quick is number 26, that little red heifer. She's considered a heifer. She's should be three years old now. She was bred last year when we bought her. She ended up not even having a calf. So I think she lost it sometime down the line. But uh, she's bagging up pretty good. She's got a good sized bag on her. We'll run by her and look at her. But while I'm down here on this side, there's three cows down here in this draw. Here's that 26. Let's see if I can't show you guys her bag. She's getting loose on the rear end. Starting to look a little uncomfortable. Nice big bag. She's got to go soon, surely. And she's the one that, when she's getting close, I want to make sure I'm kind of around because, for one, Charlays are known to have a little bit bigger calf. Um, the three calves we've had out of the bulls that we've used so far, we haven't had any issues. I mean, there's been small calves, maybe 70 pounds max. Um, but also, it's her first calf, so um, it. I guess the pro is that she's a lot bigger than she would have been last year at this time. But I still want to be around just to make sure. So we might even come check later tonight. She's not really showing signs that she's, you know, having contractions or anything like that. So I think we're probably in the clear, if I'm being honest. But anyways, guys, everybody else kind of just sitting back, not doing anything. Kind of boring. It's always a good time when you can get another calf on the ground. But anyways, I think I'm going to end the video here, guys. Um, get that thing posted up today. Had a good, successful morning. I'm going to say that. We got a lot done. I'm glad we got those yearlings up here moved. Um, everybody's looking good. So that right there is going to end it, folks. Thanks for watching. Like I said, we're doing a 50-day challenge. We're on day 45. I've had a couple people reach out and say, hey, you should do keep going every day. And it is taxing, I will say that. So if I decide to do that, I might take a couple days off and then get back to it running strong. So we'll see what happens. Thanks guys, peace.